Hi and welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, stick around because the weekend's here and we're off for another van venture. So we're uh, just getting ready for the off. Allison's just popped into the local shop to get a couple of little goodies. We've got the dogs in the back barking because they are ready to go. Uh, the minute we start driving, they'll just settle down in there. Um, so we do have Bracken with us. Hello, my son. He's a good boy. <laughs> so uh, our plan today is we are heading up to Northumberland. Um, we've booked a parking spot in the Castle car park um, at the bottom of Bamborough Castle. So we booked a spot in there uh, for our first night up there and then we'll be moving further up the course once we've had a, a nice day in Bambra. So yeah, we'll catch you along the way on the journey and uh, fingers crossed, weather stays on our side. Looking forward to this one, see you in a bit. Oh, that's good. Council, we're going to put height barrier up. Can I get under that? Head northwest on the winding. Well, you want to continue on the winding. All right, hang on, there's another one along here. They've probably done the same. Change plan then, okay? Hi, look. No, the height um, barrier. He kind of got under reserve boards. Hang on, some has. What did you say that was? Six eleven. Six foot eleven. What's oh. that was? Uh, I can't remember. I know we'll not get under there. There's no parking along here. Um, right, you're going to turn I'm going to try and get. There's no parking along here, like a couple of lay by bits. Oh, is that? All right. So there's Did this. That will do us. Oh, no. Post. I can't. No, I can't. Into the posts? No way. Is that the 
Is that supposed to be for parking? Are they a parking bears? They can't be. I don't know. Come by, like. But we can't do that. Come. I don't know. They've gotten in. Right, I'll reverse in, like. No, we're. Yeah. Well, how can you get out of the door? Yeah, we'll get out, man. Wing it. Ridiculous the way they've done this, like. Just open the back doors. No, it's me plan. need to get out. It's too dangerous. Let's just go park up in the main car park. So, what's actually happened is, we are going to park at the bottom of the castle tonight, but we were planning on trying to get parks in the car parks on the windings. But, Northumberland County Council, shame on you, because what you've actually done is, you've put height restrictions in and the parking to stop any camper vans getting in there. Continue on the winding for three quarters of a mile. So the height restriction you've put in is six foot eleven. We can't get in, we're seven foot three with a roof box on. But they've deliberately done that. This is Northumberland County Council. They've deliberately done that to stop camper vans going in there. Well, we were parking up in and peering for old parking in the main car park tonight. Yeah, but what they've actually done, so not only are they discriminating against people with bigger vehicles, they're also discriminating about the accessibility as well for anyone with mobility issues. We can't. Because when we park at the bottom of the castle, in the prepaid car park, so we can stay for the night, it means that we can't access the beach because the two car parks that's closest accessible, to the beach yeah. that are accessible have now been closed. They've put the height barriers on, which has then literally scuppered everything. So we've prepaid and we're not going to be able to get onto that beach, I don't think. Because of our disability, we can't walk. That and also what they've done is in the park, they've deliberately put wooden poles in the parking bays, which, I'll show you. which stops any camper vans parking sideways on, which is fair enough. Yeah. But if you see That's these, tight. look, look how ridiculous that. that is. So again, they've put these posts in deliberately to deter camper vans. So again, just discriminating against anyone with a camper van and discriminating against people with disabilities and access needs. Now I do know that Northumberland Council do supply free wheelchairs, um, all terrain ones to get you on the beach, but you actually need two full able bodies people to actually get you to the beach using these wheelchairs. I can't push you and you can't push me. It's, it's ridiculous. We could have parked in one of these beers in the car park and been straight on the beach. Northumberland County Council, shame on you for your discrimination against people with larger vehicles and people with mobility issues. Shame on you. Yeah. Is a well parking space talk or not? Is it Head southwest towards Links Road. Yeah, uh, Links Road car park, motorcycles, yeah, we're in two. Uh, what home, what does it say on that? Yeah, two, somebody's in it. Somebody's in it at the minute. Right, okay. So that's six till eight anyway, so. So we've made it to uh, Bambra. Obviously we tried to just pop along to the windings, just have a little uh, chill out down there right next to the beach. But uh, you might have heard me a little rant earlier, Northumbria County Council has decided to discriminate against bigger vehicles getting into the parking bays. So anyway, we've paid for the night for this spot. Um, so we're here now. We should be actually in the one next to it, but there's obviously this guy's here. Um, his ticket's till half past five. We are here early, so we'll just wait and see. But uh, we're chilling out at the minute. Uh, just flick you around. So we've got Bamborough Castle up there. Obviously we've got a horrible generator going on from that ice cream van at the minute. Um, Car park, to be fair, is nice and big and spacious. Uh, plenty of car parking places here. 
there's big areas for coach turning so there's no parking allowed in that area but uh, motorhome stuff there's uh, motorhomes all parked along the side um, you do buy your ticket online and um, there is a scan QR code on the post uh, I actually pre-booked um, the other night so I think it was uh, £12 for to stay the night between 6 and 8 um, but yeah looking quite good at the moment weather's still on our side which is good um, to show you where we're parked at the moment flick you around again so we're parked here and we've got it's nice up against the wall so we've got a little bit of greenery behind us uh, and obviously we're just overlooking the fields which is ideal and then in the back there look we've got <laughs> yeah we've got all the dogs there and there's all of them stay get in Bracken get in in <laughs> so we're Lily what you up to Lily Bob anything she can trouble Double troubles down there. Where is she? Double trouble. Yeah, there she is. As old Desi. My little Desi do. Aye. Lily Bob. Has pigs. That's how we're lucky. Oh, Brooklyn, I'm going to kiss. Stay up. Get in. Get in. Get in. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it's actually quite a nice spot where we are, even though we're in a car park. We have got a nice little bit of. Nice little bit of scenery there, there's horses, there's highland cattle in the field there. Um, yeah, as Alison says, there are plenty of little birds pottering about. So, what's the plan for in the morning, Alison? Uh, we're going to get up early, as we usually do, and we are going to try and go back down to there and try and park as close as we can in one of them honey bears with the logs. Um, and hopefully because we can't access and hopefully be able to get, get down onto the beach from yeah. there yeah, so give, give yeah. a good run. so as i say we're normally open open about early so we'll shoot off down there first thing in the morning and uh, try and get a, a nice spot um just go out and park again get the doors open get the dogs down onto the beach Errol Brack and have a run about where he's ball because he loves that ball <laughs> look at all do with dipping the head in the water at the minute because it is really hot Oh, nice breeze the yeah, it's yeah. Nice. So, and I think I'm actually going to cook outside tonight. So I'll be sticking that shelf up there, and I'll be dropping that seat down, and I'm going to cook at the back here. Um, so yeah, should be quite nice. Um, I got a, um, I got a nice little twin burner cooker off uh, my daughter for my birthday or oh, Father's Day it was. When did I get it? I can't remember. I got it for one of them. Um, never had a chance to use it yet, but I think tonight we're yeah. going to use it. Uh, we've got a curry to make. So, yeah, I think we'll be cooking the curry outside. Fantastic. So we'll catch up with you in a little while. So I've got the, the back set up a little bit, ready for cooking outside. So this is my setup. So just gives you a little bit of shelter from there. Um, Shelf just clips into them panels. This is my new outdoor cooker that daughter bought us. Fantastic. And then while I'm cooking, I can actually sit at the side and do a bit of cooking, uh, which works works treat. Only problem we've got is we've got uh, four hungry dogs that normally hang over the top there when trying to cook. So I think. We've got an extender lead for Bracken, so I'm going to bring him out and he can just potter about on the grass just outside of here and then the other three will just watch over the side. So, let's start making a curry. It's quicker and easier to cook on there. It'll fit in a small pan, that's the thing. Cooking in gas. Hey, I've got a nice drink, so thank you for that. Yeah. Yep, oh, nice it's going to go now nice. Lovely breeze. So my plan is 
get this chicken cooked. We definitely need a bigger pan. That's when we get one, we're going to buy a bigger pan. Put it on the list. And we need another can of gas because we've got two burners, and I genuinely thought I had two bottles of gas in the van. I haven't. I've only got one. So we're cooking on one. Now the plan is get this chicken cooked, get it in a bowl. Before we left, we already prepped some mushrooms and onions, so we'll get them cooked. Um, and then uh, chuck everything in like we normally do and end up with hopefully a really nice meal. We'll catch you in two seconds. Just because that camera is sitting. So I'm going to explain this. Yeah, so that episode's just passed. I do get a pre-warning of it, um, and the pre-warning is basically I start to see things like sort of flickering like this, but quickly. Really difficult to explain, but I get that warning. I mean, if it was to happen when I was driving, I would have a chance to pull over and stop and settle and uh, try and get sorted. So I mean, that episode there just lasted a few minutes. Um, so back to cooking the chicken. No, but you have mentioned that to your MS. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the last time I went to see the MS specialist, yeah. I'd mentioned it because I genuinely thought it was at the start of a stroke or something like that. Um, but yeah, she just did, didn't know what it was. Um, obviously, I, I get MRIs and stuff, and there's nothing picked up on MRI. Um, yeah, and I'll know I drive, so yeah. And you declared everything to the driving agency, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, DVLA. I mean, I'm on a three-year license at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously, I've declared anything that gets worse. Yeah. Right, I'm going to need a bowl to put this chicken in for now until okay. I can fry off everything else. So. Two minutes. <laughs> Let you wash this pan, since you're not letting us use proper oil. <laughs> so. Onions and mushrooms going in? Oh, they smell nice. Pre chopped? Yep. Yeah. Well, not pre chopped. They were done in those. So we didn't buy them pre chopped. Yeah. Need some more of this spray oil on. So you need it, yeah. So I've actually got. We are sort of having to see it. Yeah, I've got peanut oil in the van, and Alison doesn't like it. So we're using this sprayer stuff. Like is doing the job. It is doing the job. Perfect. So, what you're going to be doing? You've got the lovely onions and mushrooms. Onion mushrooms, just about cooked. Mm -hmm. So I'm now going to add the sauce into there. And I must say that this cooker is doing the perfect job. Even with the wind coming through, it's not flickering with the flames or anything like that. So it is the perfect cooker from my daughter, and I will say at this point, you're my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell the others. <laughs> right. Did you say we had little naan breads? Yes, we got little naan breads. They're going to have to go in at some point. Uh, just, I think I'm going to serve, serve the curry, and then I'm quickly going to chuck the naan breads in the pan with the lid on just for a couple of seconds, or a minute or so, and that should warm them through. Look at that beauty. Oh, it is a thing of beauty. Oh yes, it will be mine. Eating through lovely already. I think we do need a bigger pan. Yeah, we do need a bigger pan. I mean, realistically, this pan I think must be designed for one portion. And uh, we've got a few going in. Let's get that chicken back in. <laughs> got to fit the rice in there yet. 
<laughs> it always manages to go in the one. Yeah, because it's a pan of wonders. We wonder how this pan works. We always end up with a lovely meal from the pan of wonders. That in. Next is our basmati rice. Oh yes. Oh yes. How does it work? How does this pan of wonders work? Yeah. I'm gonna see if our minimum and maximum works on the thing. So ideally I just want that to simmer with the lid on. And then I'll give it a good chunt around with a spoon in a minute. And then the rice will be cooked, the chicken will be cooked, the sauce will be done, onions, mushrooms. Oh, fantastic. And I've got to say, the dogs are all quite comfortable because there's a beautiful breeze coming in the back of the van. Because it is quite hot today, Andrew, isn't it? It's really hot today, and a nice cool beer is working a treat. I can see who's been in bed early tonight. Because <laughs> that bee has gone down too easy. <laughs> oh, I thought you were like, <clears throat> ready for your next medication. <laughs> <clears throat> right, give this a quick stir. Oh, look at that. It won't be long and you will be mine. Oh yes. The little pan of wonder. We definitely need a bigger plan. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that is still cooking with a little bit of breeze on it, isn't it? Oh, it's cooking amazing. And downside is to red hot in, I'm red hot cooking. <laughs> Should have just had a cornet. <laughs> bless you, me dear. Sorry. Oh, bless your little cotton socks. You should have bought the woolly ones. <laughs> Well, this pan's uh, doing its job. It's looking good, it's looking good. You know, I'm cooking this, I haven't got my glasses on. Oh, the elder, I know what I'm cooking. That sounds done to me. That sounds done to me. Time to serve it up. So, we're at plan. Just shut that into the bowl. Gently does it. Patience is a virtue. How's that looking for you, Pat? Perfect. Oh, fine? Mm -hmm. Right, so our next plan. This is going to need to be quick. So I'm going to... A bit more spray oil in there like that. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this bag. How many do you want, Pet? Four. Four little ones for the little one. Four little ones. One, two, <laughs> three, four. Yeah, I'll just sting a few in there for me. <clears throat> I am going to oil again, so I'm going to real oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, that pan is hot. So you want to put that on the top and hopefully they'll cook through a bit. Well, warm up. They're already cooked. Just need to warm up. Tidy as you go, that's what I like to see. Always work tidy. It's more efficient. It's safer. You don't... <laughs> when things are safe, you don't need your heart hard. Oh, tell you what. Yep. 
they smell delicious. <laughs> oh, I think they're looking tremendous. I think they're about done. Yep. Well done. So we shall turn that off. We shall give Alison a four nuns. I shall have whatever's left. Delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the perfect curry at Bamber Castle. I need a rubber drone because the plastic ones hurt when they hit you. Give us a look at your nose. Oh, give us a look at the blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> Good morning. So, nice, uh, nice night we had last night. Um, staying in the car park at the bottom of Lumley Castle. Um, it was really quiet. There was six camper vans in total. Uh, as I say, it's £12 to park there. Um, Pre-booking is advised. Um, but there was one guy who turned up who tried to scan the QR code and was unable to, so he was unable to pay, so he got a freebie. But, uh, yeah, really, really quiet. So peaceful. Um, and obviously being right next to one of the fields, all you could hear all night was just the birds um, first thing in the morning the sheep the birds again the cows in the distance absolutely stunning really really peaceful night's sleep um, and where we were be a lot a car park you actually do we reversed up against like the grass verge and the hedge and the stone wall so you didn't feel like you were actually in a car park which was really nice um, anyway we've Obviously, we've went to bed early, so we woke up early. Um, so we've had the dogs out for a, a quick wander, let them do the business and stuff. We've just had a quick wash and spruce up. Um, we've drove along now to the windings again. This is where we drove temporarily along sort of yesterday evening. Um, there's, ironically, <laughs> there's loads of camper vans parked along here who's been camping here overnight. Um, none of them's been moved on, which is <clears throat> fine, fine with me. But obviously, I think the council ain't about to mind up what they want to, what they want to do and try and prevent. But uh, so I'll just flick you around a little bit, and so we can sort of see what we've got. So we've just came along here this morning, and already along here is two, four. There was five vans before us. And in the two car parks that we went past yesterday where we couldn't get under for the, the uh, height barrier, there was already about four other small campers in there. Um, so, yeah, obviously, <laughs> park where you like, basically, that's fine. So, obviously, our plan was today, we got up early, we've come along to the winings because today we want to spend on the beach with the dogs um, and then... A little bit later this afternoon we're going to head further up the coast um, and we'll show you what's around up there. So I just need to spin you around so you can get these. Have a look at these fantastic shots. I'm hoping that the camera's actually going to pick this up because just the way the sun light is breaking through the clouds 
you can see the rays of light. And all the way along them we've got Bamber Castle there. So just heading back directly out in front of us across that area. I can't see on the camera, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, there's a lighthouse out there, um, that's the, I believe, the Outer Farn Islands. Um, and I think the one further back is Staple Island. Um, but Bamber Beach is stunning. It's miles and miles of just stunning golden sands. Um, where we're actually at at the moment, because we were struggling for access, <coughs> we're actually here and the beach is there so we can actually get down at this point and then once we're on the beach Bracken can have a, a good run around up there so absolutely stunning another thing just for all you that's really worried about me drone accident yesterday. Yeah, the drone came down. <laughs> Obviously, Alison, really concerned, didn't stop laughing for about two hours. Um, but uh, as I bring the drone down, I normally catch it. But because of my EMS, when I went to catch it, I couldn't open my hand. So my hand's currently stuck at the moment. I can't get it wide open, so I can only close it or get it to there. So as I was trying, to open my hand to catch the drone. I couldn't, so one of the rotors caught my finger, came across, here is on the nose, and I've got a little cut on my nose. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go, drone accident. Should have had my hard hat on. Um, I'll know for next time. Anyway, catch us in a bit. Oh, having a really nice morning at the minute. We've uh, had all the dogs down on the beach. Bracken's had a good run around. The three little ones 
and luckily the blind dog, she's had a good run around. So all in all, not too bad considering it's still only half past nine. <laughs> Three dog pile up there. I'll knock it off the run on the beach. Thank you. I'll enjoy it, isn't it? How about Lucky? Hey, darling. Are you a good girl, Lucky? She likes smelling that so there. Tablet. Mm. Alarm. Alright, sick of that going off. So, are you chilling, Lily? Hey, just chilling. Hey, sitting there like a little bat thing with them big ears. <laughs> Your little head and your big ears. She's just watching all the dogs down there. All of you. There's old Brecken. Oh, Oh, look. I'm trying to get in on that, are you? Poor dog pile up. Alright, is that where it is? Let's get that one in. Alright, stay there. Alright, poor dog pile up there. Dog pile up. My favourite place. He enjoyed the run this morning. Right, certainly did. In Nova Air Rock Hills. <laughs> nice place that look, Well, I've just had the drone up again and got some nice nice shots of the oh the top of the rock pools and everything else. And I managed to catch the drone this time instead of it uh, your nose off. Turning, hitting us in the nose. <laughs> yeah, just think I was funny last night. Was funny last night. <laughs> Shocking. That was my suffering, oh, no. poorly nose. Terrible. There always has to be at least one stunt. Hi, Bambra. thinks he's in a white snake video. Yep, it is beautiful. So we've just arrived at St Alps, uh, we're at the harbour and this is our parting spot for the night. So we'll have a look in that rock. I'm now just about to appear Harbour Master. It's actually £20 a night now. It used to be £10 a night but it's gone up. But it, £20 is still worth for the view you've got. A couple of divers going in.
make three meters. Yeah, I just want to see the life and stuff. Yeah, there's plenty to see when it's got around here. Yeah, yeah. So, just across to the Harbour Master parking. Twenty pound night in the box. In a little packet with your registration on as well. And read that through for you. Yeah, proper work in harbour. So we're parked in there. It's a big camper wedged in on the end, so we couldn't get on the end. Uh, it's unfortunate, but if he leaves, we might nip along there a bit further. So, little bracken on the seat. Hello, my son. Hello, son. So we're dizzy. <laughs> Right, in, get in, get in. Right, let's climb in. Allison, how are we doing? Get in, Connick. Get in, get in. Yeah, it's nice. Whoa. Nice park up. Hopefully, a nice breeze. Tell you what, it is still warm. It's still warm though, very humid. Do you think we'll want to get some rain? Potentially. Yeah, we are sheltered down here in the harbour as well, like so. Yeah. There's a couple of people paddleboarding out there. We've got a couple of people snorkelling out there. There's a few boats out there at the moment as well. And there were some bagpipes playing. So I think potentially someone might have had uh, I don't know, some kind of memorial, maybe scattered the ashes. Yeah, so there's been talking to a couple of divers there. They've uh, been out on a boat. Um, and they've been diving around there. The last guy I've just spoke to there has just said that uh, he was really looking forward to seeing the wolf fish. Uh, he hadn't seen one before. Uh, went out on this dive, and as I say, it's a nature reserve, so um, you know it's it's got an abundance of uh, the water life there. And he saw six or seven wolf fish. So, hiya. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go out, just as the other one comes back in. So yeah, definitely an uh, interesting place to come and visit. Um, nice village at the top as well. Um, St Nab's village, really tight as you're coming through it, but it's, uh, it's nice. Might be a bit tight for some of the really big motorhomes, but uh, smaller camper vans is fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to head across a little bit towards the cafe area and stuff and show you around there a little bit. So, got the cafe which was quite busy. Obviously popular. There's a <laughs> brick and brack barn as well, selling all sorts of brick and brack stuff. Just. We'd have a look at it. Uh, there's fishing rods, there's jewellery, there's all sorts. So, yeah, it's very interesting. So, again, that's the harbour, really nice.
<laughs> Is that deeper than you thought, Swan? Was that nice? Was that nice? Are you going back in? Are you going in? Go on, you're going to show off. Are you going in? Go on then. Should have gotten your ball, shouldn't we? It's because he's gotten straight out of his depth, that's why he's on show, aren't you, son? Eh? Because he gets straight out of his depth, I think. Instead of like on the sandy beach where he can walk in. Oh, oh careful, careful. It's one way to say it's one way along the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it, slowly, slowly, there's Bracken, Bracken's in, whoops, there you are darling, he in, there you are darling, it's a good girl, yeah, <laughs> Bracken, you can't go, where are you, where are you? <laughs> so, another really good night. Um, obviously, seagulls never stopped, but didn't bother us. Um, both fast asleep, no problem at all. Um, woke up this morning to an absolutely beautiful sunrise. And the seagulls still go on. <laughs> um, but yeah, really nice. We are going to start and head back now because we do have things to get on with um, back home. But yeah, overall it's been a fantastic trip. Thoroughly enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed St Abs. Um, it's a fantastic place if you get a chance to come and visit. Um, so we'll catch you in a little bit on the road. So you can see we're out back home. Um, but a good weekend, have we? Oh, lovely. Yeah, but a good weekend. Obviously, we were unsure which way the weather was going to be, but uh, weather's turned out to be fine. <laughs> it's lily um, We did have rain last night, um, but that was while we were in the van and asleep, so that was fine, didn't bother us. Yeah. And we've got a lovely, glorious day at the day, which we'll be spending in the garden. Mm -hmm. Has Bracken just pinched a stick? Bracken's wondering about uh, picking sticks and twigs up from the garden and he's come about and just chewing them. So we will be getting interruptions from the little dogs, but never mind. Okay. So, um, just obviously to re reiterate, we went up to Bambra um, for the first night. We pre-booked in um, one of the car parks, which is the main car park. I can't remember the name of it. The just main down car by park. the castle. Yeah. yeah. So we pre-booked that. Uh, it was £12.50 online. To book it, um, we were given park and beer number two. We didn't realise, but each one of the park and beers actually seems to be a park and beer, and then another, another beer. beer next to it. So you, you've actually got room to put out your bit chair and stuff if you want to sit at the side of your vehicle, which is quite good. Mm -hmm. um, but we did it at the back and it overlooked the fields. Yeah, we just opened the back doors, and as you've seen in the video, we were 
uh, up against uh, there was a lovely little bit of grass there then the hedge and then a stone wall and then overlooking the fields with the cows and sheep and stuff island and cattle, yeah the island horses, cattle was, was nice and the birds yeah really nice yeah. obviously there's no facilities in the car park and um, there is public toilets further into Bambra village that you can use uh, but obviously i'm not sure on the opening times with them so once we stopped there for the night our next plan was early in the morning we were going to go along um, a road called the Windings, which leads along to the golf course. Which we did do yeah. early in the morning. Yeah, now we went early in the morning to get a pot beer because we know it is popular and it fills up pretty quick. So stay the night, leave very early in the morning, try and bag one of the spots in the things. But obviously when we got there, um, Northumberland Council, uh, in their stupid wisdom, decided that they've actually put height barriers on there now which is madness because I don't know what they actually stop and going in there. That was the um, car park. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if it was a plan to stop motorhomes, yes, they've stopped motorhomes, but they haven't stopped camper vans because you can still get, um, you know, a VW camper van or a similar size, like a Transit or, um, you know, one of the Vauxhall Vavarios or something like that. You'd still get one of them underneath there. We couldn't get under because we had the top box on. Um, and then obviously once you're in, if you've, if you've got a, a VW or a pop-up top, then you're laughing. But I think the whole point of them putting there is to stop camper vans or deter camper vans. There's supposedly no overnight parking in there, but people were overnight parking. Um, that... which, which is fine because what we were trying to say, and I've mentioned Alison, that... That particular car park is the only one that gives... Easy a access. Better, a, better, a better access than what a lot of people do over the dunes because we can't, we don't know another way. Yeah, to try and get it where there isn't another the way. Beach. I mean, you, you can check on Google Maps and you clearly see that from the car park where we were to get to the dunes is one hell of a hike. Yeah. And you're going through, if you're able, if you're able bodies and everywhere and fit and healthy, you'll really enjoy that hike it's really good it's yeah. beautiful stunning scenery across the dunes we did the, it when we were fitter yeah the sand is really deep and beautiful golden sand but we can't do that now so the plan was to get into this car park because it is very easy access it's it's less than maybe 50 meters onto the beach it's which would have been great but we yeah. couldn't we physically couldn't get parked in there because of the barrier and the barrier isn't actually a deterrent for anything because camper vans can still get in, camper vans can still stay overnight, um, cars can still get in, cars can stay overnight and so I don't know what they're actually achieving by putting up a height barrier because um, as I say they might be deterring motorhomes but they're not deterring camper vans so I don't know, all I do know is that they are discriminating against people with um, slightly bigger vans uh, the discriminating against people with uh, disabilities. I mean, I'm not just talking to us. We've we've got mobility issues, but you know, other people with disabilities. I, I will say that on their website, they do offer um, free hire of um, wheelchairs, wheelchairs yeah. that's designed for going over the beach. But you actually need two able-bodied people to push it onto the beach. <laughs> so, you know, there's us two. We cannot get onto the beach via that because. They're discriminating against bigger vehicles parking there. They're also discriminating against um, disabled, basically. So shame on you for that council. Um, absolutely terrible. Northumberland. Yeah, Northumberland County Council. Shame on you. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> right. We, we did park up a little bit further along the way um, and we did get access onto the rocks but not onto the beach. Um, a bit beachy, but yeah, the rock. Yeah, not nowhere near as it was, it was flat, can I just say? It wasn't yeah. rock. The, the good thing is we've got the drone, so we still yeah. got to see everything, but we just couldn't access it. But where you <clears> did park, it had the posts, which is probably on one of the videos yeah, so earlier. If you, if you look on Google Maps along the windings, you can actually see where there is. Obviously, it's an old image. You can see camper vans parked sideways on in the parking bays. Um, so they've got the side doors open against the thing. They've yeah. now put big log posts in there. So you have to either drive in or reverse in. 
Um, but you still couldn't get the door open. Yeah, but the passengers where they've actually put the posts, we we drove ours in, but we couldn't open our doors fully to get out. To get in out because the posts were right where the doors were. So again, struggled. Yeah. So Northumberland County Council, shame on you again. Um, now that's not just us; that's anybody with any kind of camper van, um, whether it's a large or small. Well, again, you wouldn't get a motorhome in one of them gaps. Um, we fit in there snugly and again couldn't get the doors fully open so it doesn't help trying to get in and out of a beer where you can't get your doors open properly anyway we did go on the beach a little bit on the rock side um well the dogs yeah they give the it. the dogs exercise we we managed to park up there with the doors open for a while and enjoy the views and it's just so dramatic yeah being on a beach and then you turn and you go oh my god no matter how many times we've seen it, it's still dramatic when you see it and hopefully you'll feel the same way with the footage it's, if yeah. you haven't been. Yeah, so it's amazing. So and the village itself is pretty. Yeah, it, it is a nice village. Um, yeah. Obviously, par parking's a, a nightmare in the village because the double yellow lines are all over the place. But there there you, is certain parking areas. If you areas. park in that big car park where we were, well, it will body people can walk into the village. Yeah, so... It's, Pubs, coffee shops, toilets. Yeah, there is also the um, the Grey Stalin um, Museum, historical museum yeah. in there, and we did notice as we were driving past the is actually um, there was a field open on the other side of that that uh, you know, PL Deer Park and I think it was about five pound or something for all Deer Park and in there, so just for nothing <clears> really. Yeah, but. Uh, Anyway, so we parked up at Bambra and then our next um, thing was that we were going to drive up to St Abbs. Um, St Abbs is a place where I've dove in the past. Really nice little harbour. Well, harbour. It's not even a harbour town. Um, there is St Abbs town right at the top, but down, actually down in the harbour. There's, there isn't a pub. There is a, there is a nice little cafe there. Great for diving. You can book your dives, get air fills, um, book boat tours. You can go out on a... Um, a big power boat that shows you the sights, the dolphins and things like that as well. So plenty to do, definitely worth exploring. We actually parked right on the harbour with our back doors overlooking um, like Seagull Rock in the middle. The water um, basically. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. It's, it's stunning. I've never been before. Like I say, Andrew's been diving a it's, few times. But um, I was gobsmacked at the, the scenery. And then you've got this huge cliff, which I'm going to mention what I saw this morning. So you've got this, you, I was looking out onto the ocean and the, um, the huge cliff. And I saw the sheep on the top and there's a house up there. And then all of a sudden I saw this uh, female deer with her two baby deers climbing around the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> was very precariously and not in a safe smacked. manner. Not in a safe manner. No, Shall but <laughs> they did what they wanted to and they loved it. Yeah. I mean, I, were, I was amazed. So anyway, we'd stayed there the night. Um, again, you pay the harbour master just in the hut. Um, you'd seen on the video, it's literally just a little hallway. You shoved 20 quid through in an envelope. <laughs> nice so, for the harbour master. Yeah, but I mean... I would have paid that to stay there. Yeah, I mean, just for the, the view, it's so dramatic, it's, Kids you know, and peaceful. Yeah. It was like a mill pond, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is really safe. Yeah. Um, like I said, kids wanting to swim, snorkel, um, and there's plenty to see because it is a nature reserve. The wildlife under the water is mm -hmm. in abundance, so it's beautiful. Yeah, hundreds of jellyfish. Um, hopefully the video has picked them up. Um, yes. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic on that. Um, as I say, there is a, a coffee shop that you can um, obviously have male coffee and stuff in there. That, um, that was there busy is, all day. There is toilets in the harbour as well. It yeah. is a bit of a hike up because it is quite a, a gradient to get up with the toilets. Yeah, but, you sort of turn but it, a bit. It, it's not a long walk. No. Um, and they were open 7 in the morning until 9 pm, I think. 7 am till 9 pm. It's just pretty much we could both walk around the harbour because it was all flat. And then if you imagine just all of a sudden you get a road going up, it's sort of just like, I don't know, 10 metres that way. Yeah. So it, you can see it from the harbour as yeah, well. But yeah. it's good to know that opening times <coughs> and they were clean all day. They were getting Yeah, I think I think day. they go in with a, with a jet wash and just yeah. like literally jet wash everything down. Um, yeah. So it was clean. It, it was wet floors when we went in, but 
Oh, doesn't matter. You can do board trips there. Yeah, yeah. Um, See the dolphins. The, yeah, there is actually a shower as well in them toilet was blocks. That? Oh, I know yeah, so. I was definitely a shower in the gents. I'm not sure about the women's. Um, but so if you've been out on a dive or something, you could That's go good. up there and shower as well. Um, well, there's a dive shop there, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah, mentioned that so you get your, okay. your air fills and stuff. Um, as I say, so it was £20 <laughs> to stay there, and if you want somewhere that's really peaceful, well, other than seagulls, seagulls you know are really what, loud, though? but it gets the, you don't actually... It's the way, and the, that's what you're going for, it's a nature reserve. Yeah. It's so beautiful. You get the beautiful bird song at the bottom of Amber Castle, near the hedge, and you get the seagulls squawking <laughs> their heads off all day and all night at no, uh, St. Abbs. Yeah, they did stop they for did an stop. hour or so. Yeah. But... <laughs> In the van you don't need to be, it. To be fair, it's one of them noises that just and goes these anywhere. And all yeah, hanging out the back of the van all the whole time we were there yeah. just watching them, weren't they? Yeah, the dogs just loved it. They just loved it. These two two hours love to people watch. Yeah. So, as I say, you put them in the back of the van and they just sit with their heads on the back, back cushion and just looking over the back. I Absolutely love it. Look the old blind dog. Just she likes she just likes the fresh air. She loves to so yeah. yeah, she loves yeah. to smell everything. And obviously Bracken is into everything and smells everything and eats everything. What's that? Um that's fell off the tree. And obviously he was in the water again yeah, this time, so off. he's loved it. <laughs> it's an almond. <laughs> yeah. Bracken's deciding to eat the almonds. We do have a almond blossom tree behind us and it's got almonds on again this year. So they come down and they're like little conker husks, and he keeps trying to open them up. So <laughs> I'm standing on it at the minute. All yeah, right. So anyway, we're going to wrap up now. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, as usual, all the good stuff. Like, share, comment. We do like getting your comments, and we will reply to every comment that we get. Um, also, anyone that's uh, supporting us on Buy Me a Coffee, thank you so much for that. Um, if you haven't stumbled on that page yet, take a look. Um, there is photographs and stuff on there that you can download for very little money. If you want a little bit more than uh, just buying us a coffee, you can get something in return. Um, have a look on there and a big thank you to everyone that's supporting us and subscribing to the channel. Uh, we do really appreciate it. And I think we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.